I mean, I'm wondering what effect this is having on the mindset of all other aid workers in the region, because it could happen to anyone. And it seems as though this was a deliberate targeting for whatever reason, and that the IDF knew that this convoy was on that particular route, and yet still fired missiles at it. I can't understand how that can have happened, and that there is going to be an investigation. We await to see the results of it. Kevin is in Oxford. Hello, Kevin. Yeah, hi, Ian. Yes, um, I think uh, it's having very, very slightly the um, the empathy, obviously, for the Israelis now with what's happening. I mean, it's a travesty, the whole thing. But, you know, um, it's very difficult. You said it, you hit the nail on the head, fact or fiction. What, you know, we don't know. The world media is not in there. We don't know what's fact or fiction really on both sides at the moment. You know, we've got no media there per se. But one thing you can be assured of, Ian, um, is that the Israelis, I don't think particularly give a hoot about what they what, what's felt about them around the globe at the moment. I mean, I see a lot of time in Golders Green, Finchley and Hampstead uh, there today. And uh, the talk that I'm listening to and when I engage in conversation is they just want the IDF to get on with the job and rid Hamas. Now, you know, it, one minute there was a rocket falling out of the sky by the Israelis in the hospital, then it was Hamas. They were both denying it. Then we eventually found out it was Hamas. So, you know, it's, it's all going to come out eventually. Will it go to The Hague? Will it ever get to The Hague? Because there's genocide being spoken about. Then we're talking every other property has underground tunnels, which which could lead to believe is our people compliant with what's going on if there's underground tunnels in their front rooms. So, you know, I think it's a travesty, the whole thing. But, you know, I don't think Israel really care. They've been persecuted for centuries. And I don't really think they care what they people globally think about them. And, and you can well, if, you, if, if, you, if you're right, they should care because you can never you can never win in the court of international opinion if you just don't care what your fellow um, citizens think about you. And that's not to say that they should always give in to public opinion or world opinion, but to overtly alienate your main allies, which they seem to almost relish in doing at the moment. This is not the Israeli people I'm talking I'm, about. I'm talking I'm about not. the Israeli government. Uh, and and th- you cannot you cannot win, either militarily or uh, in, in the PR war, if you act in this way. I, I, I do agree with that, Ian. But, you see, they're fighting an urban warfare. And um, when you've got the enemy mixing in with the civilians, you're going to take a, a high toll on, on, on casualties, you know, um, collateral damage, they call it. So, you know, they assume that by ridding Hamas, they've got to go through certain collateral damage. I think they're kind of condoning that in some respect, saying, well, do you know what, we've got to do this. Um, it's, it's, you can't fight urban warfare when, when the, the army, uh, your foes, are, <laughs> are hiding behind civilians. It's impossible. Um, somebody says to me, are you going to challenge this conspiracy theorist, that's you, Kevin, by the way, uh, who is talking about every second person having a Hamas tunnel in their homes? Well, um, that may or may not well, be true. Was, that was but news th- media. That was on the media. Well, um, the, well said, yeah, that doesn't actually make it necessarily true. But Zippy... Let, let me finish. Zippy Hotavelli, the Israeli ambassador, made that claim in this studio to me. As a, as a justification for the fact that yes. large sections of Gazan communities had been obliterated. And I, I said to her, I said, well, that's an argument for destroying the whole of Gaza. And she turned around and said, well, what would you do then? Yes. Well, did the Hamas bomb drop on the hospital where the Israelis? What do you think, Ian? Well, we know it was a, it was a Hamas bomb. How do we know? You're saying we don't know. No, we do know. You just said we, do, we don't know. No, we do know that. We know that oh, now. We don't know about the at, at, at the time, we didn't know. Uh, the suspicion was that it, it was an Israeli bomb. I was on air that evening yes, when it happened. I remember, I remember it And well. I remember uh, being very sceptical about what, well, what the truth was. And I was right, really I was right to be. I, I appreciate it. But so, so can we be sceptical? I mean, do we know? Do we not know? It's all got to come out in the wash, isn't it? Well, we and, and we, we know that there is a huge network of tunnels. I mean, what to what extent there are? Whether they, every second house has access to them, I I I can't know that, can I? Of course, you can't. No, no. Good. Well, let's leave it there. Thank you very much, Kevin. Let's go to Mohammed in Harrow. Hi, Mohammed. Hi. Thank you very much for having me on. I think um, I'd like to make one key point here, is which is 
What we're seeing now is not distinguishably more extreme with the Netanyahu government versus what we've seen across a lot of Israeli history. So I think a key uh, a couple of data points here. One, the first prime minister of Israel himself had said that we are the aggressors. The Arabs are simply here defending themselves. Number two. Albert Einstein, I hope you've heard of that guy before, he rejected the potential proposal to become the president of Israel because he wrote in a letter explicitly explaining that he sees so many indicators of extreme fascism similar to the Nazi state occurring in Israel. And that's why he rejected becoming the head of Israel. And this is a good, what, 80, you know, 70 years ago? This is the... Uh, information that's often emitted from our Western narratives of understanding the conflict and the situation. Sadly, what you do have is an extreme radicalization on a massive segment of the right in Israeli society as well, which is a byproduct of uh, a group of victims that were victims in the past who have been so obsessed by the victimhood mentality that they've effectively recreated the same trauma. It's your classic uh, trauma-induced situation where, sadly, in the extreme fear of being uh, oppressed and victimized, uh, there's an almost lack of empathy, especially on a a significant segment of the Israeli right. And there are a couple of things that that demonstrate this. You know, I think one, um, but if I may mention, there is one point that I think is valuable for you all, is the uh, ex-Israeli intelligence, head of Israeli intelligence domestic, the Ben Shet, he mentioned that um, in his position, if he was in Gaza, he would be fighting to the death, right, to protect the Palestinians, right? Reinforcing the same concept that the reality is it's a, a situation, a conflict, which has now become genocide, if you actually read your article to the Genocide Convention, right, which is a byproduct of years and years and years of theft of land. The discussion around anti-Semitism, religion, is a absolutely false and absurd anybody who really understands the conflict knows what, it's what, about what, land well why why is it false to mention the okay. word anti-semitism sure oh no 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 to mention it of course i mean I, I think those who are promoting anti-semitism are the enemies of anyone on this conflict you cannot make the argument that you care about palestinian human rights and you don't respect jewish human rights but what's extremely dangerous is the weaponization of anti-Semitism to justify acts of genocide and violence. And this is a complaint that comes from a plethora of Jewish intellectuals, leaders, organizations, that they themselves are getting called anti-Semitic purely for saying that the, the, the evil actions of the extreme in Israel should not be supported. I mean, you have, hold on, you have heads of the ministries, you know, heads of government, people in power, not, not wackos in the right and left. You're talking about um, people like, um, you know, uh, the Minister for um, Women's Equality and Social Rights. And this is what she said. She said, uh, I'm so proud of all the killing we've done in Palestine. You know, I hope that in 80 years, the Palestinians will tell their kids what the Jews have done and how they've killed them. And that, again, is where I don't like the word Jews. It's Zionist. It's a big difference. But you're talking about seriously powerful people in the government, not just now and before, right, calling for extreme acts of genocide. One other minister mentioned that they should well, commit an Auschwitz, listen, an Auschwitz listen, against you're, the Palestinians. You're, you're coming out with Can all, you imagine that? You're coming out with all <laughs> these quotes, which I can't verify, so I'm trusting you. You that, can't verify I, because you're, you're looking at Western media. I'm sorry. Well, I can't verify because I haven't decades. got them in front There's of me with the source. There's plenty of content that no one covers in the Western media. It's astounding. Just like the three individuals that were shot dead wearing a white flag who were Israeli civilians. So you questioned uh, an individual that came on a while ago. I'm telling you now, I've seen the same video. There are tons of videos and photos. That's fine. But you have to to understand, Mohammed. It's from from respectable journalists like yourselves, and I find it astounding. (sighs) It's not omitted. I can't possibly, sitting here... You don't pre- see it. <laughs> I, look, I, I try to inform myself as much as I can on what's going on here because uh, obviously this has been a major thing over the past few months and mm-hmm, we've covered sure. it a lot. 
And I will openly admit, I can't be across everything. I certainly can't be across mm-hmm. everything while you're you're coming out mm-hmm. with quotes. I can't Google them as you're as you're saying them. So I'm tr- I'm, tr- I'm trusting. <laughs> well, I'm just trusting you that they they are accurate because they back up your argument. But thank you very much indeed. If it was Hamas that had committed this current atrocity, what would we be saying about Hamas right now? What would we be asking to happen right now? But because it's Israel, we are still tiptoeing around the edges of this situation. We're still tiptoeing around the edges of their behavior. Absolutely. This should be condemned by not taking seriously what the UN have been telling us for weeks, for months. They are, they killed their own people who were who were surrendering themselves to be saved. They killed so, sorry, civilians so, who sorry. were waving white flags. They, they what? So run that by me they, again. The they, first accusation that you made. The Israelis Israelis about two months ago killed other Israelis who were surrendering to them. What, what's your evidence for that? Just, it, it's it's recorded. What should, what, I, I don't understand why we need to have all of the evidence in the world when we're talking about the Israelis killing innocent people, but we need no evidence for when the, uh, 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 Hamas kills um, uh, 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 people in the region. Well, we have the evidence. Uh, are you seriously telling me, because if you are, I'll end the call, if you really are telling me that October the 7th didn't happen, then no, we have a problem. I'm telling you. I didn't even mention October the 7th. Well, you just said that basically Hamas sort of haven't killed people in the way that we're all alleging they have. No, there was there was a group of individuals, Israeli individuals, right? Okay, who had already been brutalized by Hamas that were trying to surrender in front of a house that that is that, that the IDF were um, uh, 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 either bombing or shooting at, and they shot their own people. Well, you're making that, that accusation. I, I I don't know about that. Um, I hope. I, How can I provide you the evidence? Well, you, you, do you want me to send you an email? You can email me whenever That's you like. That's exactly what I'm going to do. But if I send you the email with the details, I will challenge you to express that on live on air. I doubt that you will. Well, it's a bit difficult, isn't it? Because um, I can't look at your email while I'm broadcasting. And then by the time I have looked at my, the email, which is probably on the train home tonight, I won't be on air. And tomorrow we may not be Ian, discussing this, this subject. Is ending, so, is it? This is not ending. This subject will be spoken about again because right now the Israeli government does not care. What it wants to do is wipe up every single brown person, every single Palestinian in that particular region for their own aim and goal. There is no way that anybody with eyes or a brain in their head can say that anything else is happening. They bombed Al Shifa again. Again. I don't understand why it is that you, you, uh, you, you I believe that you're a good person, Ian, but I don't understand why none of these things matter. It's not that these things, it's not the case that these things don't matter. It's actually quite difficult, I think, for all of us to sort out truth from fiction in a lot of what's going on here on on both sides. So do you believe or don't you believe the UN? It's you do can't. You believe or don't you believe it, it, Amnesty International? It's not as simple as saying, "Do I believe X, Y, or Z well, on it everything?" It was when we wanted the, to bomb Saddam. The, the, it was when we wanted to bomb Saddam. Well, you're going back 25 years now. It's the same people doing the same thing. Well, it's clearly not the same the people West, because the it, the, 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 the okay, leaders are different now. In simple terms. Let me put it to you in simple terms. People with browner skin need to have far-reaching evidence in order to justify anything that they do to save themselves. People with fairer skin can do things like kill 200 innocent individuals and not be held to account morally or or within uh, uh, any form of criminal justice. Did we find weapons of mass destruction? But you you see, uh, some of the things that you've said are undoubtedly valid but when you basically accuse israel of wanting to kill every palestinian which you did a couple of minutes ago and i didn't pick you up on it then and i should have done um i mean th- then you undermine your own argument don't you because what, okay, whatever so you 
whatever you think of Sorry. Israel as a country, it is a democracy. It, it, it is not a dictatorship like most countries it's in the region are. It's a where Palestinians have a single vote, just like an Israeli has a single vote. Well, is Isra- Israeli Arabs have exactly the same voting rights as Israelis, uh, as, as, as Jewish Israelis. Uh, you're right that Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank do not have a vote. You're absolutely right on that. What about the settlers in the West Bank? Do they have a vote? Yes. Well, who, and who, who, which government do they use to, in effect, uh, express their democratic right? The, the Palestinian or the Israeli government? The Israeli government. And, where uh, and, they and live? I, look, do they live I, 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 I'm not. I am on the record of criticising the Israeli government for its settler policy. So you're not. You're not going to catch me out on that one because they shouldn't I'm not be. They, to catch you out. Well, I'm you, can, you kind of are. You kind of are. I'm not. Okay, then UN resolutions. Shall we talk about UN resolutions and who has who who has the most UN uh, UN resolutions against them on the planet? Israel does. There you go. That yeah, that that does not necessarily that does not necessarily mean that they're always in the wrong. Okay, compared to Hamas, then how's that? Well, Hamas is not a state; it's a terrorist organization. It was a democratically elected uh, a government. In two thousand, it, 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 well, two thousand and five. Funny how they haven't had any elections since then. How long has Bibi Netanyahu been in, char- in charge? Well, he's had a, he's had countless elections, and some in some of them he's and been what, ousted, and, and other ones he's been voted back into and power. What do, and what do thousands of Israelis want right now? What are they actually doing? They are marching yeah. to oust this individual. Yeah, absolutely, and I support them in that. I I don't want him in power either, but he he well, he is the legitimate head of their government. Legitimate, like Saddam was legitimate, yeah. Well, no, Saddam was a dictator. You see, you're confusing oh, okay. two things here. So, I mean, Netanyahu, okay, yeah, Netanyahu yeah, who leads a coalition government, he put the coalition together. It's always been a, a bit of a weak coalition. And I have absolutely no doubt that he won't be there for much longer. And I hope he isn't. But you can't, you can't compare what, him you with Saddam. You, <laughs> okay, then you really why can't. do you hope that Netanyahu won't be in power for much longer? Why because, do you because, I, because I don't think he's been a good leader for Israel. I think he's... Um, done a lot of things which I personally disagree with. Even though, I mean, and who does that impact? Who has that impacted? Well, it's impacted huge amounts of people: like the Israeli citizens, Palestinians, and indeed world opinion. Absolute, and I, and I think his, his, his problem is that he, uh, right since the beginning of this, has not held the whip hand, and he's done what unfortunately happens quite often in these on these occasions when Israel actually does have right on its side. Over time, the world public opinion is turned against it because of the actions of the Israeli government led by him. And that's what's happened here. So how do we hold Israel to account? Well, we we hold them to account in the way that we have been holding them to account. If you look at the the pronouncements of the British government over the last few weeks, they've been in great contrast to what they were at the beginning. Whilst we're selling them weapons to kill people, whilst we're selling them... Well, David Cameron has actually threatened that if they don't let aid in, we will not provide them with weapons any longer. Threats are one thing. I'm talking to you about actual actions. We are still selling them weapons that are caused that is causing this destruction, Ian. And yet we complain, or I should say people in the West somehow complain in respect to peaceful marches occurring within our democratic country where we have the right to protest. On well, what basis? Peace, peaceful marches to, basis? Up, up to a point, Lord Copper. I mean, when, when you have people wearing swastikas, for example, which I'll talk about a little bit in a minute, when you have people wearing swastikas, we all know what that means. The Nazis and want to exterminate the, the Jews, and, and, and that's and happen? that's what Hamas want to do to the Jews as well. Listen, the fact is, we live in a country of laws, and we know that any form of hate symbolism is against the law. And well, the police don't seem to understand be- that. Well, that's, I can't speak on behalf of the police. I can only speak on behalf of the thousands, the thousands of peaceful protests in respect to this current conflict, as opposed to the, the, the a small minority of idiots, which you're always going to get right within a, 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 a march like this. But you can't ignore the vast majority of individuals that are protesting peacefully for a peaceful outcome in the Middle East. Ceasefire. We're not saying... Uh, uh, well, the British Israel. government has what? called for a ceasefire. What more do you want? I want us to stop selling them weapons and start flexing our muscle in respect to the control that we should have over them on the basis of what they need from us in America. Okay. Is that complex? 
No, that's not complex, and that's a perfectly reasonable argument to put. And I hope, look, we've been talking for about 10 minutes, which, as you know, on this programme is much longer than people no, normally get. So I, I hope you feel you've had I your say, John. That. Thank you, I have. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot. John in Epsom there, uh, somebody says caller of the day.